Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. Yeah. Um, so let me get to this question from Kevin Peterson. I know I'm way behind on the, on the question stuff. Um, Kevin says, I'm looking at getting my son a Glock 44. Are the rumors of it being unreliable true obviously the glock 44 just came out i saw you at shot show a media day um you uh, we didn't do a video with you there media day we did it with another competitive shooter that shoots for glock i'm trying to remember her name um you had a few uh competitive Probably ashley or michelle michelle i think yeah. it was i think michelle. it was ashley i want to say it was ashley she was awesome by the way and then we we got the gun out and we did a video there's been a lot of video so um, there's there's stuff here, but address Kevin's question here. He's looking to get one for his son. There's there's stuff out there about it being unreliable. What can you tell us about what's going yeah. on with the Glock 44 and what you guys are finding out since it got released here in the states? You have to be careful with the with the internet. You know what I mean? Because everybody gives their opinion. And and uh, when I was in Shot Show, uh, we had we had several G44s on the range, and with all the hundreds of people that came by and shot them. You know, we shot a we shot a ton of rounds and no issues. We also, at the same time, we had two guns over at uh at uh, uh Las Vegas Metro PD, and they were doing their own uh, media day. Well, so that's like like you know, law enforcement appreciation day rather. Mm -hmm. And we shot five thousand rounds through two guns over there, and didn't have any issues. Mm -hmm. Now, with that being said, uh, I, I've saw the stories on 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 on, on the internet. Uh, there's been some things that happen. We don't know what, you know, like I said, we don't know what people are trying to do to the gun. But out of all the guns that we've produced, I think we've got like 70,000 out there and only a handful have came back. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, there's nothing that I would be concerned about. You know what I mean? Uh, we, I've got mine. We've shot, we've shot tons of rounds to them and we've had no issues with them. So yeah. I don't think, I don't think there's anything, uh, for anybody to be concerned about being unreliable if they purchase this pistol. Right. So I know that I think there was a video or at least I don't know if it was one or two videos um, where I guess the, the gun went off out of battery for people. Um, here's what and then I know we've had uh, Mac from Military Arms Channel on that I think I believe he had two. He tested them. He came up with certain things. We tested ours without looking at other people's stuff. And there was so for example, when we were testing when we were testing the Glock I believe in we put like over 500 rounds through it. We we obviously didn't get anything out of battery because you guys would have seen that from us. Uh, we did have some failures, and I know like Mac was saying, for example, just the way that those like the the slide was coming back on the 22. You know, if that goes wrong, that you know that could conceivably um, set everything off, right? Because it's rimfire and and create an issue like that. Uh, we didn't see that, but we did see some of these failures. Is that related to ammo? What can you tell us about the ammo, the ammo situation? I know when the gun came out, it came out overseas. I, I've heard that the ammo overseas is better. I'm not sure what ammo you guys were using at Shot Show. Do you think that has anything to do with it? Yeah, you know, you know ammo, ammo is always going to play a part. You know, mm -hmm. ammo can, all, you know, not all, not not all ammo is created equally, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and you're talking about 22 rimfire, which is, you know. Uh, that stuff is, you know, it, it's you, it's hit or miss sometimes, you know, a lot of times with it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, I would definitely chalk it up to ammo. Uh, when when running more of the high end stuff, from my experience, the gun has been flawless. Okay. You know, uh, it works better with some than others, but I always tell folks if the gun is broke, the gun will stay broke. You know, it won't fix itself. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, so. Mm -hmm. Ammo is normally the culprit when something starts to go wrong. When you start getting the gun go bang, 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 and then you have some you have some stoppages, then mm -hmm. it goes bang, 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 bang again, and you have mm -hmm. a stoppage. So, you know, the gun doesn't have a personality. Does that make sense? So it yeah. can't change and it can't decide who it likes more. You know what I'm saying? So right. anytime we get an issue with a gun like that, when it's shooting and it's going bang, 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 and then I have an issue with it and it comes back again. Uh, nine, nine and a half out of ten times, you can chalk that up to ammo. Yeah, in all honesty, with twenty two, with twenty two rimfire, we were expecting to have issues. Um, you know, you don't necessarily shoot twenty two rimfire and get everything happen perfectly. Although, exactly. 
you know, I mean, after that, we did shoot another, like, the there's the, uh, what is it, the Torix, someone's, I think it's the Taurus TX-22 or whatever, was pretty good. Um, do you think it's also maybe the way that people load the magazines? Um, I know there were some folks saying that you have to load it in a specific way. You do have, the one thing that you have on that magazine that I think is good is that you have an assist that you could pull down. Yeah, But I don't exactly. know if, if that affects somehow like how that that round's being fed in or yeah you guys i mean looking at anything there it, it's hard it's hard to troubleshoot you know by mm -hmm. word of mouth you know what i'm saying you mm -hmm. know without actually physically seeing it and being there mm -hmm. uh i've seen people do a lot of wazoo stuff to guns mm -hmm. and then they automatically blame the gun mm -hmm. and then when 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 you question them in hand, they're like, "Oh no, I didn't do it. It's, it's all factory. It's this and that, and, mm -hmm. you know." And, and so you just never know what people are doing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know. Do you guys do you guys ever look? I mean, I'm not trying to you know like I'm not trying to catch you out there or anything like no, no, this. No, I understand. Yeah, I think this is great. I actually, I I mean, I didn't even realize how awesome this was going to be, man. You're you're actually uh, like even better than I thought. You know, when it <laughs> comes you. when it comes to this subject. Um, I was a massive fan of Gunny. I'm just going to tell you this really quick. I'm a massive fan of Gunny. Um, since Gunny, you're the best representative of Glock that I've ever spoken to. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. I appreciate that. <laughs> and Gunny was an awesome dude. I love him. Uh, God rest him, man. Uh, I, I really love that guy. Um, but, but so the thing here, you know, obviously with the Glock 44 that everyone's been waiting for for a long time, um, and then being 22 rimfire, right, was really highly anticipated. You said that, you know, you guys, it wasn't 100% ready. So you went on to some other things and then came back to that. I think there are some issues out there. Did you guys have, has anyone at the company, like, been looking at the videos that people have put out? Um, oh, yeah. I mean, anytime we listen to what's going on, you know what mm -hmm, I mean? Mm -hmm. when some, we we want to have the best possible product out there. So, mm -hmm. you know, despite what some people may think, what people may say, we don't just turn a blind eye. Mm -hmm. When there's stuff floating around, we don't like that. We, we, we see stuff going on. We want to fix it. We want to make it right. Mm -hmm. And if there's an issue with mm -hmm. something, you can rest assured it's going to be fixed. Yeah. Okay. So maybe, so it's possible that somewhere here down the line, we might get like uh, some kinds of improvements. Here, here's my thing, I think. Here's my thing, I think, about the, um, about the Glock 44. This was highly anticipated gun in America. I feel like I feel like Glock made that and you can correct me here, you know, um, I feel like Glock made that gun really as a world gun. So that's where we run into some of the the, the things that immediately as Americans we're going to complain about the gun, right? Like m m me included, hey, it's only 10 rounds. <laughs> You know, it would have been awesome for it to be 20 rounds, 30 rounds, 50, 100. I'll take it. I'll take it all. So, but I feel like obviously as a world gun, uh, uh, 10 rounds is probably what you'll be able to do in a lot of countries. It's 22, a lot of, like, like we can get 9 millimeter here, 45, 10 millimeter, all those things, not necessarily in other countries. So we, when it was released, it was released overseas. Then it came here. And we're just really anxious to get into it. We have lots of different kinds of 22. A lot of us who plank, we just throw, like I have bucket of bullets that I, you know, the real cheap Remington stuff. You ever saw mm -hmm. that? Yeah, that I want to put in there. So if someone asks me this right now, like we're trying to answer, uh, what was his name? We're trying to answer this guy's question of whether or not he should get one for his son. Here's what I would say. I would say if, if, you, if you are a Glock guy and you want your kids to be able to use a Glock, the Glock 44 functions like a Glock. It feels like a Glock, except it's a little lighter than a Glock 19. But if you look at it, it's like, oh, that's a Glock 19 until you pick it up. It functions, works like a Glock and everything. Um, maybe you'd have to load in a certain way or think about what ammo that you put into it. But, you know, being the American consumer and a Glock, and a Glock guy like myself and lots of other folks out there that are Glock guys, Glock fanboys... Um, you know, they, they always feel like they want a little bit more out of it. So I think we want more, more ammo capacity. And then some of these things that came up, we want to know like exactly what's going in there. Some people before they invest into it. Yeah, of course. Uh, we, we're actually making a 15 round magazine, by the way, how, some of the other companies out there that's making 22s, what's the magazine capacity on those? Um, I'm going to say, uh, Mike, you can feel free to jump in here. I know you have another question. I'm going to say, I, I think I've seen 12, 15, um, all the way up to Caltex making something that I think is like a 33 rounder. And how, how reliable is it? 
Yeah, um, most the the, the Caltech yeah. has to also be loaded in a very specific way. Let's yeah, be honest. And that's the thing, Let's be honest you know, about that. And, and I know, you know, in America, that's the thing about America. We we mm -hmm. we none of us like the same stuff. Mm -hmm. you, get, you get three guys right now, me, you, and Mike, and all three of us want to have a different taste in mm -hmm. things. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's nearly impossible to fit the needs of every individual. You know what I mean? And when we released the gun, we knew, you know, the ten round magazine was was the one that was working best we're in the process as we speak we're uh of, of developing a 15 round magazine for the gun you know what i mean mm -hmm. uh and that's the thing you know you you, you want to be able to, you want a gun that runs so if you start making these wazoo magazines now how reliable is it going to be if you get a 30 round magazine you know what i'm saying so people will be pissed they got a 30 round magazine but then the gun ain't running so i always tell folks everything that's good to you ain't good for you yeah you know every I mean? yeah we're gonna <laughs> listen i mean and i'm gonna say this to you right as a gun guy, I complain about everything. So when I did the video on the kel uh, what is it, the CP33? We didn't read the instructions. We just started trying oh. to load that magazine. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that didn't go very well. So beca it. because it's 33 rounds, it's like, it's, I don't want to say, it's like a double, triple stacked kind of deal. It gets you excited. It gets you excited. Yeah. And you, so we just yeah. jump in there and we do it. So that's like Caltech, I think, is one thing. And the way that people look at Caltech, they look at it in one way. And I think the way that folks look at Glock, they look at it in a different way. And this is why I, I by no means think that that gun was a failure. So if I was answering this guy, I would tell him, if you're a Glock guy, if you specifically want a Glock, get this. If you just want um, a gun that's affordable, like, you know, affordable, however you want to put that, and that can that has a 15 round or 20 round capacity, get any anything else that's out there that has a good reputation, um, Absolutely. But a lot of us are Glock guys, and we want to see we want to see Glock be a hundred percent perfect, you know. And that's why maybe there's you know a little bit of something going on around the the Glock forty four situation. I mean, like I said, I, I haven't witnessed any of this stuff. I mean, at Shot Show. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. um, everybody that came through those guns, everybody that came through a Shot Show and ran a G forty four walked away smiling and giddy and happy and was like, damn it gonna make me buy another gun so yeah. this is not scotty banks talking this is this is the feedback i'm giving you guys that yeah. i've seen in the field now with that being said just like anything, i mean and i and i saw that too i saw that too different. i saw that too at shot show i think maybe i'll have to go back and look at my video i think maybe we had some kind of feed issue when we were out there but that might have happened once or twice you have to give a certain amount of leeway to a 22 rim fire absolutely for that situation but you i don't know to. i don't know how like one thing one thing that a lot of guys like me and i think this is probably a situation uh that's not 100 percent on glock right i think it's also a little bit <laughs> on the expectation i'm just trying to get this yeah it's, it's a little bit on the expectation of folks like myself and how something let's say like media day works because it's very it's very tough to get into the weeds on things at media day. So if someone load if if someone knows, hey, load these magazines properly, they use a specific kind of ammunition, everything can go great. I think at media day, but then once we get it out in the hands of the people like myself, we don't always read the instructions, we don't realize this or that. Maybe there's ammo issues, maybe there's this thing or that thing, then it becomes I think you know, once you once you make something and you put it into the world, right? Now you have Absolutely. a million people using it in a million different ways. Of course, yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, if, if anything man made, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? You know, uh, you know, our motto was Glock perfection. You know what I mean? But you know, perfection is an unattainable goal. One of my old SWAT commanders always told me, you know, perfection is an illusion. It's an unattainable goal, but we strive for it. Everybody mm -hmm. strives for it. Mm -hmm. So anything, any, any, anything that that's man-made is subject to be bad or go bad or something can break, something go wrong with it, definitely, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. But, you know, like I said, and this is just honest talking, us talking, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of the stuff that people are saying, people have a way of exaggerating stuff and then making it worse than what it really is. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, we've ran that gun, I've ran that gun. There's no way we would have put that gun out if we wasn't satisfied with the with the, uh, with the the results we are going to do. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? We would mm -hmm. not do that and, and, and catch all the flat. With that being said, you know, when you mass produce things, can 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 stuff get bad? Sure, it can. Mm -hmm. You know, but there's no way we would have released that pistol if we didn't feel confident, 100% confident that that you know this gun was thoroughly tested. Mm -hmm. It was thoroughly tested. You know what I'm saying? You know, and there's no way that we would have put this gun out if we thought it wasn't going to be 100%. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. By the way, when we tested it, everyone that uh, tested the gun said that they would buy it. 
Um, maybe some people had some stipulations, like they want the twenty round magazines, or they maybe want it to be a little bit more affordable or something like that. Um, Got it. Yeah, but you know, I what what I think. It, what I think, you know, if, if the guys, I don't know if there's someone at Glock, I don't know how everything works. It would be cool if there was someone over at Glock that would that maybe was out looking at videos and talking to guys like myself and some of the other people out there that do this. Because I don't, I know from my point of view and other guys like me that I speak to, we're not trying to like bring anyone down. We're just trying to show people things. And a lot of times I try to like I show people exactly what happens, even though sometimes people get mad at me. Like I make long videos because I'm showing them everything that happened because maybe the folks like yourself at Glock will look at my video and go, wow, this thing was happening here. Let's see if we can communicate with that guy, figure out what ammo was he using, what things did he do um, so we could see what's going on here and bring that thing closer to perfection. One of the things that I respect about Glock, even before I, even before I, I had great customer service with Glock before I came to work at Glock. So mm -hmm. one of the things that I love about the company is that you know, if there's an issue, we don't run from it. We we fix it. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We don't run from it. We fix it. We like mm -hmm. I said, we control everything about the gun. Mm -hmm. Everything. We don't have to go out and chase somebody down and figure out what's you know what, what's wrong with your quality control. We mm -hmm. control everything. So we don't run from issues. We don't run from problems. Mm -hmm. If there's something wrong, you know, we, we're gonna take care of it and fix it. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what, man? Now that uh, I've met you, I I would love to get you out on the range with us. You know, yeah, we'll man. do some videos and things like that. And uh, maybe we'll do some follow-ups to people. Unlike yeah. Mike, I have a ton of Glocks. <laughs> I have well, a of in Glocks. order for me to be a part of the follow-up video <laughs> or anything shooting Glock, I have to have a Glock in my possession. I have one. Which I have one for you. No, listen. No. No. Well, listen. Uh, help him out. But like I said, man, make him pay for all the Glocks he didn't buy. That's my. Oh my goodness. That's, I'm going to so, put that in. Put Scotty, that in. what I yeah, think man. should take place is we need to um, go ahead and link up with your people and make some type of an arrangement so yeah. we can yeah. make this. In other words, he's trying so to keep then me I can out go of down it. To the hacienda. Yeah, um, I'm trying no, to no. get down to the hacienda no. and then um, we no. go ahead and do some type of competition shooting there yeah. in Florida. Oh, yeah. No, we would no, love no. to have you here, Mike. We would love to have you here. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.